What's up, guys? It is Anime Casuals. I'm Lucky. Johnny. Michael. And we make up Anime Casuals. So today we're going to be talking about our favorite female protagonist. Uh, we wanted to keep the, the you know, the play field level, you know what I'm saying? Uh, last last time we did uh, male protagonists, and, you know, you guys can watch that video. Um, and so today's female protagonist, uh, so let's just go ahead and go right into it. Michael, take it away. Uh, so I'm starting. Uh, first, let me say there is a ton uh, going into this. I think we all had, uh, I personally had like six or seven female protagonists uh, before going in. Um, I think, uh, unfortunately, most of them are from smaller, uh, like 12 episode long runs, which I actually really enjoy because that is a smaller way to kind of develop a character. So mine mm -hmm. is actually, uh, just off screen, <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> is from um, the new um, alternative story of Sword Art Online, uh, the Gun Gale Online Alternative. Um, the main character in this, her name is Lelen. I'm going to call her by her uh, screen tag the entire time uh, because that's mainly what she goes by and her identity is mainly in the game because it's a VR game and sort of like you call it, um, Kirito um, from Sword Art. That's his name. Yeah. While he might, like, the kanji is a little different when he comes out, but yeah. I'm going to call her Lelen from now on. Uh, so all of Gun Gale kind of follows in two big arcs. The first one is kind of introducing uh, Lalen, a character named M, um, another character called Pito Hui, who is like maybe the antagonist, I would say, but um, she's kind of what keeps the story moving along. Um, and then a small group called uh, Shink, and then a various VR characters. Uh, what I love, to start with Lalen, is that she is somebody who my friends to my left have might have this issue. She, in real life, is very tall. She's a tall female. Um, I think uh, we we had the discussion of we gauged her around like six foot three, maybe six foot two. She's tall, which is big for like Japanese. She's and she's Japanese. Like, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like she's very tall, and like when she walks around, she's at least a foot higher than everybody, and maybe as tall as some of the dudes around Japan. And uh, not she, kind of woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I think she grapples with like this huge, uh, you know, kind of height complex. Because she's always been taller than other people. Uh, she's constantly feeling like that's not okay for her because she her dream is to be a small, cute, kawaii girl. Uh, and so the beginning of this just starts with her going, oh, try this game. Ah, oh, fuck. I'm, in, I'm another giant person. Or, try this one. Oh, I'm so burly. Oh, try this one. And finally she gets the gun gale after like five iterations of games. She even tries a driving game, which I didn't even know they have VR games for that. Uh, and then she's this <laughs> small, kawaii girl. And, like, um, she immediately, maybe a stereotype or whatever, but her favorite color is pink. And so she dresses herself top to bottom in pink before she even understands the game. She's just like, I'm spending money on it. Um, and I'm like, oh, that's funny. That's hilarious. Uh, but probably won't do well because, you know, pink fairy isn't camouflaged. But... She ends up being a brutal, uh, brutal character, like, very immediately. Within the first episode, she goes out to a desert, kind of learns the RPG mechanics of Gun Gale, uh, and then goes, oh, wait, the desert sand is also pink. And then she becomes a player killer, like, almost immediately. <laughs> uh, like, some dudes rush rush past her, and then she just mows them down with her P90, which, be yeah. um, mm -hmm. and which I developed a little love for a P90 after this. Uh, so, like, mainly my run for characters is, like, I love when they have this kind of breakthrough emotion or part of them that's, like, not what you were introduced to immediately. Yeah. And her thing was just, like, okay, I'm gonna now, all I'm gonna do is camp out in this desert and just kill people, whoever comes here. And she, uh, she earned a nickname... Hell, I forgot the nickname, but that's okay. Um, I think she's like Killer in Pink or something. Ooh. Something close to that. Uh, oh, no. Pink Devil. That's what okay. it was. Uh, and Which I find hilarious. So that kind of gives us our intro to this character. And then she gets introduced to a character named Pito Hui, who has been playing VR games since they existed. Yeah. Um, and as we're going through, you kind of see how Lalan is just like this brutal killer... Whenever she's thinking too much, she's kind of in her own head. But yeah. any she, anytime she lets loose and becomes the pink devil, you just see her annihilating people left and right. And, like, 
she she becomes like this kind of figure that people around her, which I love about many anime, is that people are looking up to this character because of the way she plays. Yeah. She's not playing it she's not she's not like, you know, the typical anime character who's like, For my friends, yeah. yeah. The first <laughs> the first time she plays, she's like, Nah, I'm killing everybody, it doesn't matter. Like <laughs> I, I wanna survive, but I'll kill everybody. <laughs> and there's like an interaction between her and the dude who's playing with her where he pulls a gun on her and she's like I just took out the the ammo of it. And he's like, what? And she's like, yeah. Then she just like kind of goes, hey, if you're not going to play with me, get away. And then she goes on to mow down another like five people. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, she's so, she's so brutal. Like, it's great. Um, But after that kind of beginning part, you kind of get a reveal of like that people are like, wow, you know, we met you in real life and you're like really cool. Um. She kind of becomes like a senpai esque character for this these group of young girls who um, were I think like a middle school gymnastics team, and they kind of all look up to her because she bested them. And, and they the literally squadron. look up to her because yeah. she's so freaking tall. And that, that's also <laughs> true. And and then the girls like give her a lot of self support, uh, a lot of support, saying, "Wow, you're actually really beautiful." Yeah, and give her like self esteem. Like, yeah, kind of like self esteem boost, yeah. and like, well, you know, we wish we were as big as you because in the game we're all. Lot huge longest, yeah. But they're so <laughs> short in real life, and so she gets this like huge boost, um, and she's still a little bit grappling with her height issues when it goes in the second squad jam, which is <laughs> kind of her versus P- Pita Hui, which a little bit of spoilers for the middle of this is she, Pita Hui is a person who missed out on the very first sword art online, uh, and kind of missed feeling that I don't know what you call it, like just feeling of death being a part of a game mm. uh, she's super messed up yeah um, and she wanted those consequences yeah she yeah, yeah she wanted the consequences yeah. for that kind of thing and she even said uh, that she might have been one of those player killers who would yeah. go around and eliminate people and actually kill people um, and this is when Lelen says one of the biggest thing and I think a very big message for also today's video game community where she says it's just a game you're supposed to have fun in a game and she like pounds that message throughout the second squad jam, just going, "You need to have fun. This is not a video game. Is not a place for you to have these imposing consequences or have real life experiences. It's yeah. about having fun in the game." And I think that was the biggest thing that drew me to her is that she's even though she goes crazy and like annihilates fifteen people occasionally <laughs> in here. She's having fun, even though it looks like she's being really bu- brutal, you know, the way she's, like, yeah. darting about is that she's having fun in the game. And that's always, like, kind of, like, even though I might get salty for a game or a video game or might get pretty angry, is like, always in the back of my head is, like, you know, if I'm not having fun, I'm going to stop it. But if I am having fun, I'm going to keep going. Uh, and that's kind of mainly why I'm going to Lelen is, like, she really kind of shares this, like, important idea, I think, for video games Plus, she's really brutal, and people really look up to her by the end. Um, and she kind of changes everybody's lives by just kind of imposing that one message. Is, yeah. You know, don't impose death consequences on yourself for this. It's like, don't bring any other any other people into it. Just have fun. Yeah, and, she's got that on and off switch yeah, for it. Exactly. Yeah. And, uh, I, and while um, Sword Out Online uh, Alternative was only 12 episodes, I think it was a... It was a pretty intense, heavy 12 episodes where you really got to explore her character. And honestly, some of it was a lot, a little bit more intense than some parts of Sword Art. I mean, there, it wasn't like about being emotional. It was just watching this one person's path through kind of overcoming her own adversity mm. and kind of sharing a message of like, video games are just there. You just got to play them and not be too crazy about it. They're supposed to just give you enjoyment. <laughs> and so uh, that's why my favorite character is Lelen, um, a wonderful character. I would recommend, um, even if you didn't watch Sword Art, um, you don't need to watch Sword Art to watch this. It's a completely separate story, and frankly, you know, it's pretty powerful. So, all right, sounds that good. That is mine, Lelen. Yeah, and uh, I'm definitely going to follow those instructions because I never watched the second season of Sword Art because I don't give a damn about it. <laughs> I'm going straight to Gun Gale because I saw some of that. That was real nice. Yeah, uh, Johnny, so what, what's yours? Uh, okay, so I ended up... I had a little bit of trouble with this one. Uh, just trying to think of, you know, distinguishing who was the female protagonist and who was just super awesome in the show. And uh, I ended up coming down with a, a short list of like four people. And um, I actually stopped on one that kind of when I saw it, I remembered, and I was like, 
I really liked that anime, weirdly. And it's mm. not... Um, the anime is called Castletown Dandelion, and uh, it features... The main character's name is Akane, um, and she li- she lives in a family. They're a royal family, and um, oh, okay. so <laughs> they all have superpowers. Uh, and that's actually I think what drew what drew me in. I think it was probably the end of like season one of my hero had just passed, so I was like going through withdrawal or something. <laughs> so I went to superpowers, and I was like that, but uh, it was different than what I expected. And uh, so they all have these superpowers. It's like a a proof of purchase okay. kind of thing. And I'm like, yo, you're royalty, cool. And uh, it's about her. She's got this complex where she really doesn't want any attention whatsoever. And uh, due to a, a childhood incident, which you find out about later in the in the series, not to go into too much detail, but uh, um, and it, what sucks for her is because after that incident, her father, uh, the king, um, decided to put in two thousand cameras in the city <laughs> actually i don't remember it was in the city or just on their way to school but 2,000 cameras and she memorized where all of them were and then they moved them she's like oh god this is terrible and um well she had the showering gun <laughs> <laughs> ah, if only uh and so it goes into more um i don't know i just dropped my train of thought i'm sorry uh what was I just going to say? Oh, you're talking about the cameras and everything. Right, okay, sorry. Uh, so there's all these cameras everywhere, and so she's constantly putting herself in these situations where she doesn't want to be in the spotlight, but then she is in the spotlight. Uh, <laughs> for instance, I mean, she grew up with a, a love of superheroes, and, and uh, I don't know if it was comics specifically, but superheroes and kind of justice, and so she's got a very strong sense of justice, which, Ooh. you know, something I like, so... Sometimes she's just like, drop of a hat, I'm going! And, you know, she'll go, uh, I think someone stole a purse of someone's at one point, and, you yeah. know, she goes and stops them and does all this stuff. Uh, and then it ends up just horribly embarrassing herself. I mean, like, because, as Michael was telling you earlier, there's a couple episodes where she just isn't even, again, not trying to go into too much, but, like, she just does it goes a whole day without even wearing, like, part of her clothing. And she she's doesn't a, even know it. She's an airhead. <laughs> and everyone's like, what are you doing? Do you, do you realize this? And she's like, hi. And <laughs> she just doesn't even care. Um, so yeah, I guess not to go into too much further about the details, but uh, that's kind of why I like the character. She's uh, she got a fun kind of motif about her, um, and she's got a good personality, and uh, just the entire, watching the entire family is just fun, and uh, it's good to watch. You know... Uh, so he he's talking about this. Johnny's talking about this, and he totally wrote me in by saying, "Hey, you know, it's like a super powered family." And I was like, "Like The Incredibles? That's pretty cool." <laughs> uh, and I, I I'm not even like maybe watched like three or four episodes. And I think the funniest part about you said because it's kind of introduced in the first episode is that her her superpower, uh, is she can theoretically just fly mm. uh, without going too much into it. Um, that's basically her power. She can fly. Oh. And the funniest part, I think, that I was introduced to, he knows the rest, is that she will not use that to go to school. And I think the first, I think it goes more into it, but she said it's cheating. Yeah, she, yeah. she, she like, her, like, I'm like, now you're talking about that strong sense of justice. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like, she will make that walk every day because that's what people do. Yeah. And she won't just use her power blatantly because her, her, their dad was like, Hey, use your power with responsibility. Well, and they wanted to. They wanted them to live as normal a life as possible, yeah. which is why they live like in the middle of like all these other houses and cause a scene every morning. And they're like, "Hey, we're sorry. We try to keep it down, but you know, yeah, we're, we're royalty." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that, that, that's why it totally rubs you in. It's, it's such a light-hearted kind of slice of life anime, but it's Ooh. a little deeper. You know, my, my family academia. I like it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very nice. Yeah, I, I definitely, I definitely dug it from the the first couple clips I saw of it. So, uh, so yeah, mine is uh, actually the kind of the inspiration that um, I got for this video was uh, uh, Ryoko Ma- uh, Matoi. I, I'm not completely sure how to it's pronounce Matui. it. Matoi. Matoi. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, the main character from Kill a Kill. Um, I'm gonna go into a couple of spoilery things that happen like mid season, that kind of thing. Um, but first off, I want to, like, I like the, I love when characters are not just, um, uh, static. They, they actually move throughout a series. They're not just like, uh, and you know, that's cool if they are, they are static. Like if you think of 
something like uh, Psyche K, you know, he's always kind of the same kind of person. Yeah. He goes through some, like, weird events every now and then, but he's definitely still has the same mindset of, like, yo, I'm, like, I'm too powerful. Or, like, One Punch Man, that kind of mm. thing. Yeah. Um, but I always like it when people just change. And when you when you first uh, see her put on this um, this uh, this suit that gives her power, um, it's, it's very revealing, so she's very embarrassed by it. So it kind of has, like, a metaphorical um, significance to it. Where it's it's kind of like oh you have to be comfortable with your within your own skin that kind of thing and she eventually does when she does she actually harnesses more of a power because she's uh, in sync with the clothing itself and um, so that's kind of like the big thing about this this anime is you know uh, clothing clothing um, kind of just attaches it to people and you know you can get powers from it from them and uh, it's like normal. just just put it in a big <laughs> nutshell or something like that without giving too much away because it gets pretty crazy. Dogs hate grits. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I don't even want to know what my shirt would do. Uh, <laughs> Infinite beer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it uh, she's got she goes through all these kind of arcs and one of the the more uh, important ones for me is that she she ends up losing control at one point and she just kind of lets rage consume her and I like. Yeah. I always like when anime characters, um, they don't just get a free pass from getting the rage. She actually doesn't get very much stronger in terms of who she's fighting. Uh, she doesn't get much further in taking on that person because of her rage. Actually, it even it ends up uh, hurting her a lot more than anything. Yeah. Um, and that's what I kind of like about it is this dichotomy that she kind of has with, with revenge and also kind of seeking justice in a certain way. But how you do it is a, is a big part of that, and losing yourself maybe isn't the best idea. So yeah. I, I like I like how she has a very metaphorical um, uh, basis for uh, well, she has a very like metaphorical significance in a lot of the things that she does, and that's why I really um, I've always really like dug her character. Obviously, and also it's it's really freaking funny. Yeah, <laughs> it's super funny that whole show. Um, and then the other thing is, is that she has a very um, very close friend, and I'm not gonna remember the hell or, what the hell her name is, but. Um, it's like she, Maka? yeah, some something like that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but uh, yeah, she she she, she yeah, on. she's always there, and her family's always there to kind of like help her when she's like at like down and everything. Cause she doesn't really have anybody. Um, in the beginning of the series, she even mentions that you know her father was killed, and you know th this this and that. Um, but and that's that's why she's looking for revenge. But she can't really do all of this alone, and that becomes really apparent um, throughout the series, especially during the second half of it. Uh, she gets some help from unexpected places, and that's that's a real big uh, mm -hmm. uh, thing. And you know, so she figures out, okay, I can't really do all this alone, and that's where I like, and I've always liked anime characters like that, like uh, Luffy, like uh, 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 well, I probably won't say completely Naruto, but I mean, technically, he does use the box inside <laughs> of him, so yeah, he's not doing it alone. Um, but you know, these people, even though they're powerful by themselves, they end up trying to take on everything alone, and then they end up getting like kind of squashed because. You know, a lot of the, let's just face it, a lot of the evil people kind of spent their whole lives being alone and digging up into those power, into that power. But imagine if they had gotten the power and they had friends and everything, it would, it yeah. would actually give them a lot more power. But a yeah. lot of them kind of sink into uh, individualism to the point where they're just fighting on their own because they think they're so powerful they can't be beaten. So yeah, that's, um, that's really why I like Ryoko as a, a main character, uh, and that's kind of why she, I chose her as my female protagonist. Now, um, Michael has a really good idea. We're actually going to save this for the next video. We're going to uh, film it right after this, but just so this doesn't run too long. Um, it's going to be an extra of uh, a couple thing, a couple of other female protagonists that we would have chosen. But uh, for right now, guys, that was Anime Casuals. Casual. Keep it casual, guys.